Up next, we've got a review of the Harry Potter Funkoverse game from Funko Pop. All right, I don't personally get it, but I, everyone loves Funko Pops. People are going nuts for these things. I I really don't understand. Like this this is as big as Beanie Babies, if not bigger. Everyone loves these silly Funko Pop things. And the Funko Pop people this year at Gen Con premiered a bunch of games which they're not allowed to call board games because of the licensing, because Marvel already has board games and DC has board games and Harry Potter has board games. They are the Funko first strategy games. Today, I'm going to share my thoughts on the Harry Potter number 100 base set. Now I will point out, I, I, I don't get it. I don't understand why people like Funkos. Uh, I guess they're kind of cute. I don't get the mass appeal. Sorry, collectibles, uh, collectors whatever i don't own any funko pops i don't plan on buying any funko pops but eh, whatever to each your own if you love and collect them the power all the power to you i just don't feel lure myself see i get the basic concept a cool bobbleheadish uh figure of some character or figure you like a few on your desk or your dashboard you know if you're working in a cubicle at the office great way to sort of let your geek flag fly but things get out of hand in the funko world mm -hmm. eight thousand characters <laughs> seems excessive particularly when some of them are duplicates of the same person there are 29 versions of a late night talk show host funko pop okay. uh, that that just gets a bit over the top to me again i, I like the world. idea of a little figure bobblehead but i mean they've landed on something so <laughs> they're not even bobbleheads. Their heads don't bobble. No, no, you can but get that, it's that concept. It's that concept, yeah. right? It's the same size. Yeah. There's almost as many Funkos as there are board games released in a year. <laughs> <laughs> now, the other thing I got to know is I am no huge Harry Potter fan. Um, I'm old. I didn't grow up with it. I've never read the books. I thought the movies were OK, but they sure seem to be focused on people who read the books because there were parts I didn't get. Uh, the one thing I dig about Harry Potter was the Wizarding World at Universal Studios, which was awesome. But that's mainly because it's like a big fantasy LARP thing, and it could have been D and D, or it could have been Game of Thrones. That wouldn't have mattered to me. I just like the fact that everyone in the park was LARPing, which is true. Like you can go to other parts of the park and ask where you can find like the train station, and people are like, "What are you talking about?" It's actually pretty well done that way. Or if you walk around with, if you buy, um, we had people bought like a familiar in the area and you'd walk around in the real world and people are like, Oh my God, what is that? It's well done. People all play along. But yeah, that's, that's about it for my Harry Potter fandom. Yeah. On the other hand, my family are huge Potterheads. Books are regularly read. Movies are consistently on the TV and we have, you know, games of plenty uh, as well. So that's it. I'm not a huge fan of either of the properties in here, so I'll let you know what I think about the actual game. Now, the Harry Potter Funko Verse game plays two to four players, but it's really a two-player game. When you play four, you're playing teams. Uh, it's basically a miniature skirmish game. Uh, the basic game comes with four Funko Pop figures. Lord Voldemort. Sorry, I'm not supposed to say that name, right? I should have probably edited that. Bellatrix Lestrange, Hermione Granger, and Harry Potter. Now, note these are miniature pops. They're not the ones you see in all the stores everywhere. So this is a key detail. These are not a standard Funko Pop, which is uh, about four inches. I think it's actually three and uh, a three and three quarter inch tall is the official size of a Funko Pop full size figure. Uh, these are, as far as I could tell, a pocket pop size. Uh, okay. I was surprised. There's actually about six or eight different sizes of uh products Standard within the pops. well I, products within the the funko line uh it was shocking i thought i i wasn't aware at all but uh, a little bit of research earlier today and uh, I, there's this range of heights so there you go i think it's worth noting because i know people out there that thought these were going to be games they could play with their existing pops and that is not the case the these have their own miniatures now, along with the figures, you get four of them. You get custom dice, some cool-looking crystal point counters. Like, I kind of want to steal those. They're really nice. Uh, a bunch of cards for the characters, four scenario cards, rule book, and a bunch of counters. Uh, the set also comes with two items, which is something unique to it, where each set has different items. And I thought these were cool because there's a card for them, but they actually slot into the pop's hands, which I thought was neat. So that was cool. This particular set gives you a potion and a dagger. So I'm assuming one for the good guys, one for the bad guys. Uh, the basic game, that, like the intro game to the rulebook, is just knock out the opponent's teams. Um, 
Each player, each turn player picks a character to activate if they're two characters. Your actions are a list of standard things you'd expect, like moving, interacting with a board element, challenging an opponent. Challenging is their term for attacking. They try to keep it, I guess, kid-friendly here. Uh, assisting another character who's knocked down or reviving yourself when you're knocked down. You're going to get two of those actions a turn. Reviving actually takes both. In addition, characters have special abilities. And because this is Harry Potter, all of those special abilities are spells. And... Because this is kid friendly, I'm guessing these aren't the dark arts. No one's casting Avada Kedavra. Uh, these are more about stunning spells and knocking people yeah. out. There's no, you're not kill, you're not trying to kill people. No. Even if you're playing Voldemort, you're just trying to knock them out. Yeah, yes, his most powerful spell is called like Fiend Fire, and rolls six dice. It's huge, yeah. but again, it just knocks someone out. And Fiend Fire is horrifying, actually. So, yeah, I was gonna say that that seems pretty bad. Uh, spells and abilities are neat because each has a number next to them and everyone has a chart, a cooldown chart that's numbered four to zero, like four, three, two, one. And when you cast a spell, you take a counter and you put it on the appropriate spot. So Fiendfire is one of the most powerful spells in the game. It goes to a four, whereas Confundo, which is one of Harry's spells, goes to two. And what that does is every round it counts down, which I thought was really neat so that you can't just keep casting your spells or in the case if you're playing one of the other games, your other abilities over and over again. So I, while this is a fun and interesting mechanic, and I can completely understand why it's required by your game balance, it's completely sort of strange to the Potterverse. I mean, there is no there is no delay and, and wind down <laughs> at all in any magical casting in the Potterverse whatsoever. Uh, my guess it's just got to be yeah. so that, you know, I'm sure it's the same thing like Batman's Batarang probably can be used every two rounds as well, even though he probably should have any number of them. Why halfway through the battle does he remember to use them again? <laughs> now, movement is pretty typical for a standard board game. You can move orthogonally or diagonally with special rules for things like walls. Uh, there are basic line of sight rules, which are just draw a line between the, the middles of the hexes if a, if a passes a wall, it's blocked. Uh, some powers affect the characters, um, and there's cards to represent those. Like Confundo was one where you actually hand the card to another player. Combat's all done through these challenges, and those use the unique dice. All right. So uh, once again, nothing any miniature gamer wouldn't immediately recognize and be familiar with. Yeah, as they said, it's a simple miniature battle game. Now the dice are six-sided. There's three hits, two shields, and one crit. Uh, standard challenge has you roll two dice, looking for hits or crits. The defender then rolls dice for defense, and these are different depending on which character. Uh, the characters we saw, Voldemort has one, Bellatrix has two, and the opposite Harry Potter has two, and Hermione has one. Um, one of the characters has a shield spell that buffs that. You're going to roll your crits, uh, you're going to roll your hits, and then you're going to roll defense, shields, cancel hits. Crits are wild, so they work for each side, and they count as three. So if you roll a crit and a shield, it's actually five, four shields. If you roll more hits than shields, you knock the opponent down. If the opponent's already knocked down, you knock them out. When you knock an opponent out, you get a point. Knocked out figures go on your cooldown track for one round and then respawn. And one of the things that was neat was three of the characters in this particular set have unique respawn rules. For example, Bellatrix always respawns next to an ally. So it sounds like they've put some real thought and effort into the mechanics of this to balance the game uh, they're not just, you know, throwing a game out there that they haven't uh, thoroughly playtested. It sounds like... Yeah, this does seem like they got some real developers and some actual game players to make this game. This isn't one of those, as far as I can tell, terrible license games. Right. Kind of jumping ahead to final thoughts there. But there's <laughs> definitely some work I've been done in this. Now, the basic game is just about knocking each other out. Now, each set includes... Scenarios. This one has four different scenarios you can play through. The only one I got to see on the weekend was Capture the Play. In that scenario, in addition to getting points for knocking out your opponents, there are four crystal tokens on the map, and if you grab one of those, you get a point, and what's neat is those go on the respawn track and take four, well, five rounds. They start on four. So you can't just sit there and just keep grabbing them, which I thought was pretty cool. And then there's a flag in each player's starting area, and if you can end your turn, end the round, standing up next to an opponent's flag, you score two points. And the entire game is a race to six points, so over pretty quickly. Hey, it's a simple concept, but I actually like how that they've continued that respawning theme even through the flags uh, yep. or, or gems or whatever they're calling them. But uh, to keep that that theme of the gameplay uh, mechanic throughout the whole game, that's that's a nice touch. Yeah, I did like that. It was well done. As, as I said, this is basically a simple miniature skirmish game set in pop 
culture settings. That's what all the Funko First games. Because in addition to Harry Potter, there's Funko First games set in Batman. Or it's technically DC, but all the characters that are out are definitely Batman characters. Uh, and there's a Golden Girls set, which I thought was kind of interesting. Uh, what's neat is that all of the sets use the same basic rule set and they're compatible. Like there's a particular combo where you use the Joker and the Joker can drop bombs all around him. And then you back the Joker off and you bring in Rose from the Golden Girls, who then uses a power called Storytime and brings all the enemies to her into Joker's bombs. So I think it's pretty amusing that there's actually a combo between the Golden Girls and the Joker. Uh, and uh, Rick and Morty apparently get some love too in the Funkoverse. Yeah, that's true. There is. There's one of the smaller sets which just comes with two of them. So I, I basically probably got the idea at this point. I it, It's cute. I like the look of the figures. The figures are nice. Like they're, they're nice, solid chunks of plastic. I'm sure this is the same for all the Funko figures, but like you can drop them. They're not going to break. Uh, the boards are nice and clear. I, I thought that was good. You can really tell where walls are. You can tell where you move, where you can't. But man, are they small. Like I'm used to miniature games taking three by three feet, right? Like this is a very small board. I didn't count how many squares across it is, but man, you are going to end up in contact with the enemy quickly. Uh, so what I found, that's kind of cool, I guess, that you're going to hit each other quick, but it didn't leave a lot of room for maneuvering or strategy or like flanking or anything. Now, uh, because these sets are compatible, can you use multiple boards from the different sets? Well, you wouldn't be able to for the scenarios because the scenarios are based on the boards, but maybe for the basic game where you're just trying to knock your opponents out. Now, I, this is probably worth noting. At this point, I played the game a lot because I was doing demos at Comic-Con and I had the full rule book. So maybe there's something in there about adding additional sets. Okay. Uh, based on teaching it this weekend multiple times, this is a super simple to pick up game if you played any miniature gaming. Like any, like pick any miniature game that's ever been published. You've played it once for an hour. You probably can pick up this game right away. Gridded movement, dice based combat. That man, does it remind me of Hero Quest with the seal, swords and shields? Uh, really simple raids, combat rules, basic line of sight rules. It is a basic introductory skirmish war gaming game with a pop culture theme. And I got to say, this is a theme that is going to appeal to gamers and non-gamers alike. Like, I have a feeling this game is going to be a huge hit. It's not actually out yet. It doesn't come out till mid-October. Uh, this is going to be a huge hit with Harry Potter fans. Like, same thing for the other games. People who dig Batman are going to be interested in the DC base set. The game is simple enough that families and non-hobby gamers are going to be able to pick it up and play it and have fun with it. They're also going to be a big hit with because, well, they're Funko Pops. So uh, Jeff mentions in the uh, lobby that uh, the rule book was harder than the game. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. Like I, said, I did flip through it. I did read through it. Jeff was the one that did most. Right. And, uh, you know, people can't seem to get enough about the of their pops. Uh, if you look into any game store, whether it be a board game store, RPG store or EB games, like, you know, video yeah. game store, the size of the Funko Pop display will indicate how popular the concept of pops are i mean you don't hold those mm -hmm. kind of stock quantities if you aren't going to sell so demos. you know so we were doing demos across from a booth that's walls were pops yeah. and it, it was that's what it was yeah. it was a, a maze of pops it was insane yep so we we know all the pop fans potter fans dc fans are probably going to pick this up so what about the gamers right people like me people like us uh probably a lot of people reading uh sorry listening to this right now I personally don't think there's enough to these games to keep a gamer's interest for long. I played a lot of games on Sunday. Jeff played a lot of games on Sunday. And I gotta admit, the first couple times, it was kind of silly fun. But after about the third game, I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I, I, I get it. I see it. There's not a lot of meat here. Uh, very high random factor with the dice. And the games are so short that they're just not that rewarding. Like, when I, when I win, it's not like I felt like I outsmarted my opponent or I was tactical superior i just happened to roll better um i gotta say this looks fun for playing with kids and family but th this is i want more out of a skirmish game like i'm gonna stick to a warhammer shade spire or something else uh i gotta say i think these games are gonna be great for pot fans right. i think they can be great gateway games for people curious about miniature games so that's the one thing i'm kind of hoping from this as a gamer is that people try this and because of this get interested in something like a Warhammer Shades Fire, you know, War Machine, or going into the game store going, oh, do you have anything else like this that I can play that's a little more involved? And uh, For those of us who have been playing games for longer, there's probably not enough here to keep you interested. 
uh, Jeff in the chat room is saying, who played with you uh, on the weekend. It'd be yep. a nice gift for a Harry Potter fan who likes games, but it's not for gamers. So, you know. Yeah, okay, I did play with Jeff. It's just we were the two people doing demos. Yep. We never played each other. We played lots of other people. Or more, yep. most of the time we were teaching two people to play. Uh, what, is, what is the age on that? Like, I'm trying to think, is this something uh, I should think I, about for Christmas for my kids? Yeah, uh, I, I don't see any reason your kids wouldn't be able to get it. Right. Especially with you being able to read the rule book and catch any of the weird nuances. Right. The, the problem is it is a skirmish war game, right? So there are rules for adjacency and there's rules for line of sight and there's rules for ranged combat, right? Like, so some of the people we had doing the demos, I didn't get into this in, in, in the notes, is like the there were dice there. We had so many people showed up who wanted to start their turn by rolling the dice because that's what you do in a board game, right? Is the first thing you do is roll the dice. And then you'd make a decision based on what the dice say. And that's every game they'd ever played that wasn't a card game. That's how you play, right? So this was kind of blowing their minds. That's so why I think this is going to be a great game for getting people into more hobby games. The fact we have people like that is, is where that comes from. It's just like, so the fact we were able to teach, I, I'm trying to think of how young the youngest person. We taught a lot of adults. So the the there were adult fans of the franchises I don't think we taught any real little kids, but like your kids are old enough. I like my kids. I'm sure would be old enough for this game. Cool. Interesting. Yeah, if they can do Hogwarts yeah. Battle, <laughs> like there's way more going on in Hogwarts Battle than this. Fair. Alrighty. 